that you're ready to come to all fours, of course you can do the elbow version of cat, that's more comfortable. Settling on all fours and starting again with a, a wriggle and you could, you could slow that down, you could wriggle like a lazy lion. You can be a bit more kitten-like and move faster, lighter. You could have a little cat-like crawl backwards and forwards, or even around your room if you wish. So when we're crawling, we use a lot of muscles on the side of the waist again. So really good for core strength. Building up strength in the bones as well, especially the bones of the forearms. So if you're resting on your hands. And then coming to a Cat pose and uh, taking your feet to the edges of your mat and having your knees quite close together. Your knees don't have to be completely together, but the idea is that there's a slight rotation in the thigh bones, a slight internal rotation of the thigh bones at the hips. And then going into your forward bend backward bend and it can feel quite different, uh, a little bit more glute activation possibly, buttock muscles. And after a few of those you might like a little rest for your wrists. And you could let your feet be aligned with your knees again. Let your elbows come down and turn your palms up and down a few times, rotating the forearms or the, the cat paws if you're getting really into it. And you can also make a gentle fist when you turn the palms up and then spread the hands out when you turn the palms down. Activating the hands helps with releasing aches in the forearms after they were bearing. And then letting the knees go to the edges of the mat and keeping the toes together. And having another go at the forward bend and backward bend. And cat feeling different again. These small variations are from a practice called Continuum, which is very much focused on mobilizing the, the spine in different ways. And they do use yoga postures. But they're very focused on fluid, smooth movements. Having a bit of a, a, a wriggle as well, again with the knees wide, feet together. And then you can keep your knees wide and the big toes together. And to come back to a child pose with wide knees, which is often called hare pose or swan pose. And if it's comfortable, uh, resting your forehead on the mat or on a forearm and then stretching the other arm forwards. And if you know you've got your forehead on the floor then you can stretch both arms forwards. A few breaths there and if you if you're using one forearm, 
Painting sides. So each side of the body gets a chance to lengthen and stretch. And then coming back to all fours. And having the uh, uh, one arm a little forward of the other, so kind of like as if you're starting to crawl one arm forward of the other, and then bringing the elbow down on that side. And then lift again, and the other arm you just follow and bend a little bit. I'll show you from both sides. So the focus is on bringing the elbow down on the arm that's further ahead, and the other arm will bend a little to support, strengthening the arms, Changing sides if you haven't already, so maybe doing three to six on each side, changing as many times as you like. Maybe having this idea that you're some kind of crouching tiger. Getting a little bit of a spinal twist there as well. After a few of these, you might be starting to feel your triceps there at the top of your arms, back of your upper arms. Taking a little break, you might want to be in upright kneeling if, if kneeling isn't so comfortable. Having another shoulder wriggle, a little bit of hand activation. Whichever, whichever parts of you feel like they could do with that. Nice stretch. And then turning ourselves over, lying down on the ground. In the back, relax. Maybe rolling the head from side to side a couple of times, letting the body settle. Very relaxed. And then bringing your knees in towards your chest and stretching the legs up towards the ceiling. Having a little paddle, pointing the toes up and down, activating the lower legs. And then bending and straightening the legs a few times. Activating the, the hamstring stretch. And then if it's a strain to keep the legs up there, you can bend the knees, um, take your arms by your side. So you could either keep your legs long and stretched up or you can bend and straighten them with this next movement. A uh, dynamic lying down dog pose. So breathing in, taking the arms up towards the floor behind you, the feet up towards the ceiling and then breathing out, bringing the arms back down. And you could keep your legs straight up there, maybe bend a little and then intensify the stretch. So there is this 
dynamic element to it, which helps to prepare the body for deeper stretching. And then if it's comfortable, you might like to pop something behind your head. If your hands don't rest on the floor easily, you can come into a static lying down dog, stretching the legs up, arms behind you. So this is quite a nice option if um, the normal downward facing dog is a bit tricky for you. You can also be more kind, kinder to the body if it's very hot. And a few breaths there. And then bending the knees again, bringing the arms down, taking a little rock from side to side. Little boat posture, which you I always find quite playful. It's maybe because it's called little boat, pretending in a little boat. And then rolling onto one side. If it's comfortable for you, you can uh, stretch one arm. Up, so your head is resting on it with the palm up or down that's comfortable for some people uh, otherwise you can of course use use a cushion or a block and then having the uh, knees at a right angle from the hips and the lower legs at a right angle from the thighs so you're creating uh, some 90 degree ish angles and then taking one arm up towards the ceiling and turning the arm backwards and forwards a few times. And then releasing that. And then uh, straightening the top leg kind of extending it uh, to the end of the mat, taking the top arm up towards so that the hand sort of moves towards the other hand, if you can, and then gently rolling onto your back, and bringing the knees across, so just a slightly different way of rolling. And again, you might bring the arm underneath your head or something else for your head and then rotating the arm again a few times and then to roll over again take the arm up stretch the leg out and rolling over and then bringing the rest of the body over and take a couple of breaths curled up on your side. And then when you're ready, coming back to all fours. Uh, and take my socks off so that I don't slip, so prefer that for downward dog. Exploring a little bit of downward dog. You could always resort to wriggling about in cat or going back to the lying down version of dog, see how you feel. And tucking the toes under, Downward dog, we can 
Start with moving backwards and forwards to, to see how our toes cope with that. And so we always have a choice of you know, coming up into dogs or straight from cat, lifting the knees first. That's kind of gentler on knees and toes. Or you can bring more weight back if you're able to and lift the knees from there. And that's a bit gentler on the arms. So you can experiment a little bit. And then doing some walking dogs. So Bending one knee, then the other, wriggling the hips as much as you like, stretching the calves, even stretching the undersides of the feet a little. And come down anytime you like to rest in child pose or kneeling or upright kneeling. And again, give your hands a break. So to a, a child pose again, resting on your forearms and turning your hands over, making a gentle fist and then spreading out. That's quite a nice one. Of circling. And if you're enjoying the, the playful downward dog approach, you can come back up. And you can do a bit more walking dog, but you could also keep, maybe keeping your knees a little bent if that's helpful. Have a little wag with your tailbone, wagging your tailbone. Feels quite nice. Bend and straighten both legs at the same time. Maybe having a break, especially if you feel hot, or it's for some reason it's uncomfortable to keep your head low for a long time. You can also go to the puppy dog. You've been doing a few times with the wrist activation of lifting the heels of the hands, but keeping the fingers down. That's a nice counter pose to weight bearing on the hands. And then what else could we could we do with downward dog? We could do a three-legged dog. Uh, sometimes call it the weeing dog. <laughs> So actually, if, if you're a little tired of downward dog, you can do it from the cat and you can lift one knee up towards the ceiling, letting the body turn a little bit. Uh, or you can do that from downward dog, and lifting one leg up and then the other. Do the downward dog walk, so walking backwards and forwards or around your space. Quite a popular one with the animal movement people. And basically playing around with how can I move from these different positions in a playful way, which also tends to mean that when we get a bit tired, we stop enjoying it, something starts aching, and take a break. Take a break, shake things out a bit, rest, notice what counter movement your body might need. Like the circling of the, the wrists, it's uh, quite clear, you know, that, that, that feels good after weight bearing for a while. Spending a little bit more time playing in dog, cat, puppy dog. Oh, and the last one I'll mention is the, the elbow dog. Um, so especially for those of you that 
struggle a bit with the weight bearing on the wrists, this might be interesting. It tends to be a bit more of a stretch for the shoulders and the hamstrings. Um, quite a nice one and, and with the elbow dog, some people call it dolphin. And you can also do the walking dog, the tail wag, the three legged, three legged with the leg the raised leg straight or bent. Lots of options. Another minute or so playing or resting, whichever one you need a bit more of now. Another wiggle around, whatever you're enjoying. When we practice in this way, staying very attuned to the body, it's also a sense of, well, we can't really get something wrong. If, if something doesn't feel good, simply stop. Hopefully there's plenty of playful alternatives there. Finishing with a bit of a rest if you haven't already. So that could be sitting up or lying down in child pose, lying on your back, lying on your side, however you'd like to rest. to help you recover from exertion and feeling hot. You can slow down your exhalation, which will help slow down the heart rate more quickly, calms down the whole nervous system, which, which can be very useful when when we feel a bit hot and bothered, as we say in England, when the heat is kind of affecting us, when we feel uncomfortable. Noticing how your body feels again. So maybe you feel like you've worked some areas you don't normally. Maybe there's also that sense of the embodiment of playing and experimenting. It feels perhaps interesting or useful for you today. <laughs> 